Last week, we talked about how society presents pro-white, anti-black bias as the baseline, which results in our neurons making all of these anti-black connections. Hi, I'm Tori, and I help businesses use anti-racist strategies to improve company culture, minimize conflict, and create a positive work environment for employees of color. Why do I do that? I'm so glad you asked because diverse companies have better ideas, better outcomes, and make more money. Also because Black Lives Matter. The images that we see and the narratives that we hear reinforce really negative ideas about Black people and Brown people that have a measurable impact on our nervous systems. Racism having a measurable impact on our nervous systems results in racist outcomes for Black people committed by good white people. This bias becomes racist when it's acted upon. Even though the white or brown person, for example, running a racist script when they see a Black person is probably entirely unaware. We label our racial bias things like common sense, just being smart, taking extra precautions, and good business. The result of making decisions through this framework means that black people are more likely to be pulled over despite being less likely to have contraband on their person. It means doctors spend less time with their black patients and prescribe fewer painkillers to their black patients. And unfortunately, doctors often leave their black patients to die despite explicit repeated requests for care. This is because data shows and doctors admit Two, holding explicitly false beliefs about people of color. Nonsense like black people have thicker skin, black people have a higher pain tolerance, or black people always exaggerate. One racist lie that's been internalized and never examined, black people always overreact, therefore I can tell when a black person is lying about their experience, has led to hundreds of thousands of unnecessary deaths due to medical neglect in the history of this country. Let me explain to you why black people always exaggerate is a lie and racist. I'm going to give a very truncated version of an example that Edward Said gives that like completely broke my brain the first time I heard it. Short version, a man wakes up on a beautiful sunny morning and he decides to go fishing. Takes his fishing pole, he sits out in the warm sunshine, he's enjoying this cool morning, beautiful day, sitting there, taking it all in, and suddenly he gets a bite. Now, this story sounds like the depiction of a near-perfect morning, unless you're the fish. Not a great day if you are the fish. Conditions matter. The fish is freaking the f out. A bit of an overreaction, you might say, because the fisherman is perfectly calm. But that's because the fish's context is diametrically opposed to the man's context. But the man isn't going to try and empathize with the fish. It's a fish. Unfortunately, this is how white people typically engage with black people. Most of what gets labeled overreaction makes perfectly logical sense in context. One of my absolute favorite quotes comes from my friend, Dr. Terry Murphy, and she always says, everyone makes sense in the context of their story. Early childhood development development researchers say behavior is communication, but culturally we define emotional outbursts as crazy, out of control, entirely inappropriate. Once again, this analysis fails to take into account how nervous systems work. Like the fish, a lot of white and brown people probably aren't going to try to empathize with a black person because we're black. There is, however, some good news, at least if you're someone who thinks racism is bad news. Our brains are not static. We can replace neuron connections that exist. We can create new ones. We are not relegated to constantly run the script of racial bias that society, culture, has given us and internalized and normalized. Another idea that's pretty firmly established in neuroscience is neuroplasticity and the process of neurogenesis. Neuroplasticity just means that neurons can be rewired. Negative associations can be replaced with positive ones just through the act of thinking. In fact, studies have shown that people just thinking about positive interactions with people from other cultures increases empathy and warm feelings towards those groups even if the individual doing the thought exercise has never met anyone from this group. One might argue that we have a personal and collective responsibility to intentionally foster warm feelings towards people who aren't like us. For starters, because it works, but also because we all get to experience more joy when our nervous systems aren't running prejudiced scripts. If you learned something from this video, leave a comment. Let me know what it was. If you have questions about what I said, also leave a comment. I can respond to those. Like, subscribe, whatever you do. And I'll be back with more anti-racism tips next week.